اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ this is a continued response to the attacks uh, on the Amity Muslim community and its founder Mirza Ghulam Ahmed the next topic that we want to address is uh, this, this one's almost absurd but that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was a British funded agent um, so the mullahs of yesteryear, just like the fanatics today that we see with regularity, they want to go to war with any and everyone around them for either real or perceived injustices. Um, so instead of contemplating their own spiritual status and reforming themselves first, they want to blindly protest and fight in a very uh, militant mentality. Um, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam foretold that this ummah would be that his ummah that would become just like the Jews, um, like Bani Israel. And this is precisely what the Jews of Jesus' era wanted to do. They wanted to fight. Um, history shows that they denied Jesus. He came with a different message than what they wanted to hear. Um, and they finally basically got what they wanted in, in 66 AD, some about 30 years after the crucifixion. So what they did was they rose up in rebellion and tried to take on the Romans by their own design. Um, and over a million of them were slaughtered in humiliation in the streets of Jerusalem. So this is precisely what's been the case in the Muslim world for the past hundred years since Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has made his claims um, of being the Imam Mahdi. They denied him. You know, certain people issued uh, fatwas of being kafir, um, in which the Muslims continue to parrot. Um, calling the Imam Mahdi a kafir, keep trying to fight by their own designs, but only to be humiliated over and over again. It's actually very sad, and this is all we see across the Muslim world for the past century. So Mirza Ghulam Ahmed plainly said that now was not the time for physical jihad. Just like the first Messiah, Jesus said, uh, it was the time for the jihad of the pen, for the jihad of the intellect, the jihad of the prayer, of the sacrifice. Um, taking up arms against the British Empire would have been pointless because the Muslims were being occupied because they were unfit to rule themselves. They had declined, as the whole Muslim world had, as it was predicted by the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Mirza Ghulam Ahmed stated the obvious that the Muslims were in no position or justified stance to rebel, as they were not limited uh, from practicing the religion. Um, they were allowed to practice Islam. That was actually the main problem. They weren't practicing Islam. So uh, the Muslims are told to obey those in authority. Um, we read this. This is a very famous hadith that, you know, even if uh, a person who's put in charge of us, his head is like a shriveled up grape or like a raisin, you know, meaning that he's not of great intellect, um, that even he be obeyed. You know, basically that as long as the leadership is not commanding you to do something haram, that they're not uh, limiting you from practicing your religion, you have no right to be rebellious. It just causes chaos and mischief in the society. This is the point that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was making. So the critics say that, oh, you see, he was a British spy, um, which is ridiculous on its, uh, its own. But I'm going to go into a little more depth how this basically... So, and also true. related to this point, we see that even today... And this is sad. I, I, it makes me cringe to even say this, but it's true. Um, Muslims are generally more free to practice Islam in their own country, or I'm sorry, in Western countries, sadly, than many times Muslims are in so-called Muslim countries, you know, where you have a lot of fanaticism, you've got sectarian violence, you've got people blowing up mosques, issuing fatwas, where only one specific brand of Islam can be followed, and there's no room for any independent thought. Um, or in understanding or interpretation of what Islam is, which creates a great instability and, uh, you know, something that it, in and of itself is very un-Islamic. So, um, regarding this uh, not rebelling against the British, as the mullahs of that day wanted to do and many of the mullahs and fanatics and terrorists want to do today, Allah to Allah himself states in the Quran and many of the hadith, we're told that when Gog and Magog or Juj and Majuj and the Dajjal, the Al-Dajjal, the, the deceiver, were loosed upon the world, no one would be able to fight them. That basically Allah would give them such uh, well, uh, power and technology and innovation in the form of fire and different technologies for warfare that no one would be able to stand against them. 
Um, and actually, the book of Revelations in the Bible even calls uh, out to this, uh, this concept, and it says that the believers would have to develop the patience of the saints. And so it shows us that the true principle to be practiced here is not physical jihad. It's internal jihad. You know, what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called the greater jihad. That's what has to be done first. That's what the Prophet did for 13 long years while his followers were persecuted, murdered, starved, boycotted, excuse me, um, and, and worse. Um, and so he put up with that with patience. Only when he was surrounded and cornered and they had followed him after he had left was he commanded to fight, and he did. Um, so the point, back to the point Mirza Ghulam Ahmed was making, was for Muslims to turn inwards, rely on Allah to change their situations. And this is what Allah states clearly in the Quran as well. We're told that no one's circumstances will or can change until they first change what's in their hearts. And every Muslim should know this ayat from the Quran. Um, furthermore, the Khulafa, that is the Khalifa of the Ahmadi Muslim community over the past hundred years, on many occasions, have condemned the British government and powers that be when it's been justified to do so. Uh, even recently, in 1990 and 91, the fourth Khalifa, Mirza Tahir Ahmed, um, gave numerous Friday sermons leading up to and during the uh, first Gulf War, where he very sternly condemned the illegal and unjust actions of America and Britain, and went on further uh, to condemn the countries that they duped into following them, which included, if we remember correctly, many Muslim countries. Um, many of those same countries who joined forces with them who, and they, they savagely annihilated civilian populations, tens of thousands of people, carpet bombed, you know, 10 years of sanctions. It was, it was shameful what was done to this, this country that was basically uh, on the up. And no one is defending uh, Saddam Hussein. However, uh, as many people you know, will tell you, the, the civilians of Iraq had nothing to do with Saddam Hussein and in many ways were against him. But the point is, um, they were bombed into the Stone Age because of what were really Western designs. And the, the fourth Khalifa in a brilliant series of khutbahs um, that lasted several weeks, um, he detailed this. Um, and just as the, the Hadith foretold, the Muslims were deceived into joining forces with the real Dajjal. Uh, and if anybody would like to uh, verify these speeches, they can at alislam.org. The book, actually I've got the book here, it's um, The Gulf Crisis and the New World Order. So this is actually the compilation of all those speeches that can be read. Um, and basically, um, I dare anybody to read this book and then try to come and, and argue that Amity Muslims are British agents. It's ridiculous.